wooden cross. Their euphoria was short-lived, intercepted by German troops who still held San Miel. Carl and Anna were led to the officers' quarters for interrogation. Carl was sent back to fight for the Germans, while Anna was Damn. sent to the infirmary to care for soldiers. On April 8th, the French forces launched an assault on San Miel, an opportunity that Carl would not let slip by. Gotta go change. San Miguel occupied. Occupied by the Germans from September 1914 as a salient on the front, San Miguel was a key strategic position. It also stood on the railway line between Paris and Nancy. The Allies made several unsuccessful attempts to liberate the town before the arrival of American troops in 1918. They held it for four years, huh? Oh, his dog. That's the best. What happened in the Pierre Rebbe camp? Why did they shoot Carl? I hate this godforsaken war. How can I tell Marie that Victor will never see his daddy again? I couldn't do it. I had his life in my hands and I couldn't do it. Killing him would have brought you back and you wouldn't have wanted to see me kill. He wasn't worth it. Nothing's holding me back here now. If I survive this damn war, I'll be heading home. He's off. Oh. The Gazette de Ardan. The Gazette de Ardan was a daily newspaper published in Belgium and distributed in the German occupied zone. The newspaper was a German propaganda tool written in French informing the local population of occupied zones and POWs of the German and Austro Hungarian Empire's feats of daring do. Oh. 
Almida. Gut gemacht. Hey, Hol! Hey, komm her. Braves Tier. Okay, it's in here. Moment. Oh. Good. Got the flag. Good hunt. So one is eighteen. Two is one, and then three is five. Wait, what? Eighteen. Eight. Eight one five. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Bayonets, broken French bayonet. Unlike the broader German bayonet, the French bayonet was needle-like and designed to pierce enemies and cause serious internal damage. French foot soldiers were disappointed with the bayonet's damage potential, so added notches to create further damage as the bayonet was removed. Okay, grab a ba backpack. Oh shit. Oh shit! Take him out, bro. Where you going? What the fuck? Leave him there under the pile of rubble, bro. That's rude. Poor dog. Gas, gas, quick boys. The gas used during the war was heavier than air and so seeped into the trenches and tunnels. Pockets of gas might stagnate in shell holes on the battlefield, preventing soldiers from removing their masks, which were restrictive and uncomfortable. Even today, unexploded gas shells still lurk beneath the farmland and fields along the farm former fronts. Oh, 
damn. Hmm. Okay. A hip flask. A hip flask could be secretly secreted nicely into a trouser or jacket pocket and generally contain a wee dram of the strong stuff to give soldiers a hearty nip before strolling into danger or after pulling through a tight spot. Hey, boy. <laughs> okay, hang on. There's something that I'm missing here. I feel like I need something to throw, to throw up there. Ooh, good to you. Oh, nope, that's death. Heavy German helmet. This helmet was introduced to replace the pointed German helmet on the battlefield to protect soldiers from shrapnel. It was much thicker than the French model and offered better protection. Its rim even protected the ears. Um, the price of such protection was that it was much heavier. 1.32 kilograms as opposed to 58 kilograms. 0.58 kilograms. The heaviest helmet ever to be produced. Damn. What the hell, dude? Carl was about to finally make it back home. Freddy was joining the Canadian troops stationed at Vimy. Vimy Ridge. In the sky, George, a British aviator from the Royal Air Force, was spotting the German positions for artillery support. On this day, Canadian troops led the charge. Vimy Ridge is a five mile long strategic position commanding the surrounding plains. April 9th, 1917, 100,000 Canadians launched an attack on the ridge and seized it back. In 1922, France granted Canada permanent use of the hill to commemorate their war dead, and 11,000 trees were planted to commemorate the 11,000 soldiers without known graves. The hill subsequently became a symbol of Canada's national unity and of its coming of age as an independent nation. See how many <clears throat> All right. Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh damn! Run! Oh shit! Canadian coins. Canadians already used cents and dollar pre-independence. In 1914, they were minted with the image of King George V. Canadians in France earned $1.1 per day, corresponding to the average daily wage of an office or factory worker. Another advance. Oh, shit. Ah! Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Damn. What the hell? What? 
Yeah, they should fucking... Yo, what? Oh, that was a jerk. Wow. <laughs> Screw you, bro. Crest model. Relief models of hills were made so that soldiers could visualize their objectives. Okay, I'm pulling an invisible rope. Cool. After so many failures and sacrifices, the Canadians finally managed to take the hill back from the Germans. The United States' entry into the war grew more certain by the week. The last letter from Freddy's younger brother confirmed his country's newfound eagerness to join the fight. <laughs> 